Good morning, Holy Trinity. Welcome on this fourth Sunday of Advent to our Book of Common Prayer morning Eucharist service. A few quick announcements before we get started. Unfortunately, because of the weather, we are unable to have our barnyard nativity today. The farm called and said it's just too cold for the really little animals. So as much as we were looking forward to it, there will be no barnyard nativity today. We're hoping to have the farm in some other time throughout the year. We'll figure it out. We'll have animals here one way or another. A few quick reminders about our services this week. Friday is Christmas Eve. There are two services here at Holy Trinity, two identical services, one at 7 and one at 10. We do ask that you pre-register via the link that was in your announcements so we know how many people we'll have here as we do have restrictions in place. We can only have up to 150 people. So we do need to make sure we don't go over that limit. So by pre-registering, you let us know your intentions and how many will be here. So that is Christmas Eve, Saturday, Christmas Day at 10 a.m. We will have a Eucharist service right here at Holy Trinity. And then December 26th, Sunday, Boxing Day, first Sunday after Christmas. We are having only one service. It will be at 10 a.m. right here in the sanctuary, and it will be a Book of Common Prayer Eucharist service. So we do hope to see you at one, two, maybe three of those services. I'll be there. It'd be great to see you too. With that said, let us take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds as we enter into morning worship. I invite the congregation to please stand as able as we sing our processional hymn, number 106, There's a Voice in the Wilderness.
morning we light four candles. The candles of hope, peace, joy, and today's candle, love. This candle reminds us that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have life everlasting. Today we celebrate God's gift of love and remember that we have been commanded to love others as God loves us. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we continue our Advent journey, we are reminded that love came down at Christmas, love amazing, love divine. You loved the world enough to send your Son, and now it's up to us to love others as you loved us. Remind us that Christ is our light and the source of infinite, everlasting, pure love. Amen. Let us together pray the Collect for Purity as found in our bulletin, saying, Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of Elizabeth and Mary, you visited your servants with, with news of the world's redemption in the coming of the Lord. May our hearts leap with joy and our mouths be filled with songs of praise to welcome the Christ in our midst. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. A reading from the book of Micah. You, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall live secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. The word of the Lord. Our psalm for today is taken from the first chapter of the Gospel according to Luke and is Mary's Magnificat. So together we will read it as printed in our bulletin. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For the Mighty One has done great things for me 
and holy is his name. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. According to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. When Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See God, I have come to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. When he said, You have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings, these are offered according to the law. Then he added, See, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean, Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to see me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her, by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arms. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. This is the Gospel of Christ. Let us pray. Open our ears, O Lord, to hear your word and know your voice. Speak to our hearts and strengthen our wills, that we may serve you today, now, and always. Amen. Please be seated. 
It's Love Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Advent. And how fitting that this morning, not only do we have Mary's Magnificat, twice, but we have this truly beautiful scene between Mary and her cousin Elizabeth in our Gospel. I always wonder, when I read about this family reunion, what brought Mary to go visit Elizabeth in the first place? We know Mary was young, just a teenager. Most scholars and theologians place Mary at about 13 years old. So was Mary maybe a little bit homesick? Did she miss her family? Did Mary feel left out? Did Mary feel alone? I'd imagine that not many people around her could understand what it was that she was going through. Did Mary need a familiar place in a time of such substantial change and uncertainty? I like the thought that Elizabeth would be who Mary would run to for understanding. After all, Elizabeth, who was once barren, now had a very active John the Baptist in her belly. Elizabeth would surely understand Mary's experience with Gabriel and how insane this angel business all sounded. I like to think Mary ran to Elizabeth because with Elizabeth there was acceptance, understanding, and quite possibly support. After all, this was all new to Mary. She'd never done any of this before, and let's be honest, this isn't how bringing a baby into the world is supposed to work. This probably isn't how Mary was taught and thought that this happened. But whatever the reason, Mary made her way to Elizabeth, and we have this beautiful scene of Elizabeth hearing Mary's greeting and the child, John, leaping in her womb in response. There's power in sound. Sounds can create such powerful reactions to occur within us and around us. Sound can make people stop and look. Sound can make people go and run. Sound can do so many amazing things. When we're little, different sounds excite us. I know as a child, the sound of my dad getting home used to excite me. The red grand dam pulling into the driveway with Neil Young or Pink Floyd blaring from the open windows. I remember at Christmas time, the excitement that came from hearing the greeting of my grandparents as we pulled into their driveway in Liverpool. It was a sign of the celebration to follow. And as I got older, bigger things, bigger noises held such power. Applause at our wedding, the sound of newborn baby cries, graduation cheers as those once tiny humans now one after another take their turns walking across the stage. The sound of weeping holds a different kind of power now. The voice of comfort means so much more now. Sounds, voices, they change as we grow. There's power in sound. This sound we hear of today, Elizabeth hearing the greeting of her cousin Mary, this voice, this voice of Mary, was powerful on a whole different level. Here is Elizabeth, a woman who spent her life waiting, waiting and praying, praying and waiting. Here is Elizabeth, married to Zechariah, a man who we're told was mute and deaf. Elizabeth, still living in the shock of being pregnant, after so many years of being barren and years of continual prayers, when she heard Mary's greeting. Mary's greeting, Mary's voice, made the whole world different. Mary's voice meant he was here, he was finally here. After many centuries of promises, after many centuries of, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, the promised one, was finally here. At long last, the day was dawning. The darkness had begun to turn to light. What a miraculous moment. What a love-filled moment. A sound, a simple greeting, a simple hello, caused such a ripple effect. Elizabeth heard it, 
The baby in her womb leapt with joy because of it. Isn't it amazing what hearing a certain sound, what listening for a certain voice can do? There's power in sound. There's power in voice. This one sentence from our gospel this morning has had me wondering all week about whether we're listening for the right sounds, whether we're listening for the right voice. I feel like lately between the news, Facebook and Twitter, and the copious emails that come out around this time, there are so many voices declaring this and asking for that. I fear that sometimes, because there's just so many voices, I resort to just tuning them all out, just ignoring all of them. I wonder if when I do this, I miss opportunities to hear a voice that results in leaping for joy. I wonder if I keep missing the joy. I wonder if through some of that noise, some of that clatter, I wonder if the voice of love is there calling through and I simply ignore it. I wonder if I turn my ears off and stop listening. Even worse, I wonder if through all the noise of Advent, through all the noise of a pandemic, through all the political noise, I wonder if I just don't want to listen anymore. Because so often, when we've listened, we have to hear things that we don't want to hear. We've heard of sadness, tragedy, deaths. This week, I started to seriously wonder if there's so much more to hear, so many joyful things, beautiful things. But I've chosen to listen to maybe the wrong voices. How do we, in a world of so many sounds, know what to listen for? who to listen to? How can we listen and hear the voice of God so that we, like John, can be so caught up in a sound that we leap for joy? The truth is that God speaks to all of us, but like Elizabeth, we have to be attentive listeners and open to God's voice. It seems these days that we all want to talk and be heard, but we aren't the best of listeners. Well, at least I'll admit that I'm not always the best at listening. I have a bad habit of listening with one ear. I perfected it through years of parenting. There's always was and there still always is a lot of talking, demands, arguments, and needs that all want to be heard at the same time. So sometimes I still default to this half listening, even though I know I shouldn't. I should be engaging in true listening. True listening is to pay attention to and to hear with thoughtful attention, meaning we aren't just listening to make the other person happy, but we're listening to actually hear what is being said. So often, there is so much that is being said without words, through body actions, through expressions, through the subtle sounds and voices. I think, that if in this bustling life of busyness and schedules, if we want to hear the good voices, if we want to be listening for God, we need to give God our full thoughtful attention. We need to be looking around and listening to not only what is said, but what isn't said. I think during this last week of Advent, we need to take time to slow down and to listen for God's voice among us. We need to listen for the joy, because it's there. How can we listen for this joy when we're stuck in our busy schedules, with so many plans and so much to do? What can we do when we all seem preoccupied with new restrictions, or rather, it feeling like maybe there's no restrictions? What can we do when we're so preoccupied with deciphering new health policies, while trying to keep things small and keep people out of harm's way? I know I'm struggling this year to know what to do, how to react, what decisions to make to keep our family safe. I think the answer to all of these questions is in our gospel. As we enter these days leading up to Christmas, we all have some choices. We could complain about the busyness we always experience while preparing for Christmas and worry about how conversations will go when we communicate with difficult family members. Or, like Mary, we could rejoice in what God has done through Jesus Christ. We could grind our way through the season, 
trying to fulfill other people's expectations of us and our expectations of ourselves. Or we could be like Elizabeth, and we could acknowledge that everything we have is of God's grace. We could become discouraged at coercive advertising, special interest politics, and agenda-driven social concerns. Or we could declare the victory of God over the proud and the powerful. We could focus on ourselves, our immediate desires for gratification, and the material goods we personally want to get or give for Christmas. Or we could connect with God and what God is doing, not just in this generation, but in God's salvation history that spans the distant past and looks ahead to a glorious future. We can model ourselves off of Elizabeth and Mary. We can extend a greeting. We can delight and share in hospitality. And like Elizabeth and John, we can truly listen and respond with gladness and joy. We can keep our circles tight, our gatherings small, we can spend time with those who may, like Mary, be feeling scared, alone, frightened or uncertain, or just need a break from the hustle and bustle of ever-changing life. We can spend time with the Elizabeths among us, those rejoicing in miracles, those excited for the future, those who rejoice in our fellowship. We can extend a greeting to the strangers we meet on the streets, and those in the grocery store lineups. We can listen to the call of God. We can hear the voice of Mary when she proclaims what it is our God does, what it is that we're called to do. We can lift up the lowly. We can feed the hungry. We can help one another. We can extend love, grace, and mercy to all we meet. Never underestimate the power in sound, the power in a greeting, and the ability that we all have to cause joy to stir up in others, that they may leap for joy at the sound of being remembered, at the sound of being thought of, at the sound of being so profoundly loved. Amen. I invite the congregation to please stand as able as we profess our faith in the words of the creed, saying, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. As we have opportunity, let us do good unto all people, and especially unto them that are of the household of God. I invite the congregation to join in our offertory hymn number 480, Lord Be Thy Word My Guide.
Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. All things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. I invite the congregation to assume whatever posture they find most prayerful for the prayers of the people. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness, and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers, that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. And grant unto thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to thy servant Stephen, our bishop, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and living word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity especially those for whom our prayers are desired. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, and we bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, beseeching thee to give us grace, that rejoicing in their fellowship we may follow their good examples, and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead the new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them, that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, 
pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all people to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any person sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction, for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memorial of that his precious death, until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants, with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee, in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life, and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant, 
that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same, Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries, 
with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. I invite the congregation to join in our closing hymn, number 320.
forth into the world rejoicing in the hope, peace, joy, and love of Christ. Thanks be to God.